We need some pleasant surprises in camp. And I got a couple of candidates for just that. I'll tell you who they are in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what up? I am Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, bringing you the daily Locked On Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day. And we thank you for making us your first listen. A quick reminder that we are free to subscribe to on our YouTube page. That is Locked On Jaguars on YouTube. And then if you listen to audio podcasts, wherever you get those podcasts, just make sure you tap in every single day to make sure you don't miss an episode. Today's episode is brought to you and sponsored by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on today to get started. Special shout out to the everydayers of today's show. How y'all doing? Glad to see you again. And if you're not an everyday, if this is your first time, make yourself an everyday by just showing up, right? And checking us out. But we're glad that you are able to join us today. On today's show, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, we are going to discuss a few topics. We're going to name three players who can surprise and camp, what it means to get that unexpected play and how that helps your team. And when we say iron sharpens iron, what exactly does that mean? And we're going to point right back up to those three players that I'm mentioning. Does not mean they are going to be superstars. However, it does mean that they have a chance to really make a name for themselves. And we're going to get into it. And we are going to discuss it. I hope everyone had a great Father's Day weekend. I would be be remiss if I did not mention that. Some of us don't have the pleasure of uh, talking to our dads or being around our dads. But if you did, I hope you really did enjoy it. So what do I mean by surprise candidates? Players that Players that may do things that you don't expect them to do, although you're leaving room for them to be able to do those things. And you're leaving room for them to be good and to be great, but it's just going to take an effort for them to go out and do it. First of all, individually for those players, I know everyone thinks that everyone is always thinking about team, right? There's a part of this that want, I think the coaches, and I'm not going to speak for them, but I would guess that part of this, they want you to be selfish. What do I mean by that? Uh, Don't don't, uh, get up here and just, be succession don't don't always know and just concede that's the word i'm looking for that another guy's the starter if i was tank bigsby for instance i wouldn't concede anything i come in here and i try to take travis Etienne's lunch money now i'd be nice to him every single day and that's because well we're teammates right we're supposed to get along and all of this stuff but when i say iron sharpens iron don't think for one minute with one exception don't think for one minute that coaches are rooting for the, the backups to put pressure on the starter. And the one exception is quarterback, because if C.J. Beathard puts pressure on Trevor Lawrence, we're in trouble. So I'm talking about from a realistic standpoint, not necessarily from a standpoint of, yeah, take his job. No, but I am saying it from a, a standpoint of you're here to do a job, do it. And the reason why football more than any other sport is probably that way, maybe baseball with a relief pitcher. It, it, it's because injuries happen, guys need a blow. And then in football, one of the things that one built in mechanism that they already have in football is you better get it or somebody else is gonna take it from you because there's another guy sitting right over there. You see it more in college at these big time programs, the, the program, the Georgias, the Alabamas, Ohio States, maybe to a certain degree, Clemson and, and, and LSU, where Dude, if you don't get it done, somebody's going to – there's another dude that's going to the NFL sitting right behind you. Look at Ohio State's receivers over the last couple of years. They put three in the NFL uh, or two in the NFL, and then they had another one that went first round last year. And, oh, by the way, the best two are probably two guys that are still on campus right now from just the team from two years ago. So my point is, is usually in college we expect it and accept the fact that there's going to be a lot of competition when there's a financial commitment in the NFL, you don't always understand that from a fan perspective. So today when I say 
I got three guys that I really, really want to show up and show out and really, really come in here and try to win a starting spot and think of themselves first. Because this is the one situation where if you're thinking of yourself, you're actually thinking of the team. If you're thinking of yourself, you're actually – this is not like a ball hog in basketball where you're being selfish and now you're hurting the team. This is a do your job and try to do your job better than anybody else can do your job. And if that happens, good things will happen. One, you may be able to push the guy in front of you and make him better and fulfill his potential. Two, you may be able to be a, a guy that the veterans on that team may tell the coach, look, we can depend on him, right, in big moments. Three, you don't have to start to make a significant impact in the NFL. You can make a significant impact without starting and just be the guy who gets hot, and that's who they go to. And then four, when it comes time for them to decide another player's future, they may be able to make that player expendable because you're sitting right there and you've shown yourself. So the first player is not going to be a rookie. He's going to be a second-year player. That is Chad Moma. Now, I know there are people that will take this as a Devin Lloyd diss. That is not what this is at all. That is not what this is. Chad Muma, I think, needs to take that next step because, one, at worst, he's a dependable backup. He's a dependable player at a position where you're going to have to have some sort of rotation behind Fort Oluwakan and Devin Lloyd. But, two, It'll wake Devin Lloyd up and it'll push Devin Lloyd and make Devin Lloyd that much more of a player. Three, if there's an injury, you are absolutely certain and sure who your number one backup is. And if he can play like a starter, then you're not really into your depth as much. Numbers wise, maybe, but you're not into your depth as much. This is what happens. As soon as you substitute a guy for injury, guess what the offensive coordinator for the other team does? He tries it. He says, let me, let, me, let, me, let me do a heat check. Let me see if he knows what's going on because he hasn't been in here taking those reps. He hasn't done all of that stuff. So I think it's extremely important. I think Chad Muma is a prime candidate, and I think he's going to play much better. Now, is he going to start? Is he going to press Devin Lloyd? Uh, no, but that's the optimism and the upside that I have is that I want this to be a tough decision. I want this to be a hard decision for the Jacksonville Jaguars brass. Because if that is, then that means that you are set behind Foy Oluwakan, who is the most active player on your defense and has the work ethic that a lot of other players don't have. Well, now when it gets down to it, if you have someone that compliments him very well, and if you have two guys that compliment him very well, it really bodes well for your future. Here's what I want to happen. I want teams to be calling the Jacksonville Jaguars saying, y'all got three starters at linebacker and you don't need them all. Here's what we got. Can we offer this for that player? And I don't necessarily want the Jaguars to trade him. I know everybody says you call me trader Tony, but that's not who I am. I want the Jaguars to just have the option to know that folks want your people. I'm going to tell you more about that, two other players, and how we tie this all together in this Iron Chopkins Iron. We're talking about players who could surprise in training camp. We're going to do that and more here in just a few seconds on Locked On Jaguars, but I have to let you know first and foremost that today's show is sponsored by FanDuel. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to fanduel.com forward slash locked on to join today now baseball is very difficult for me to be able to handicap but it won't be difficult for you because i know i've been to FanDuel. they give you all the information you can read up on everything you can see all the metrics and make a sound decision so don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today just go to fanduel.com forward slash locked on to sign up FanDuel, official partner of major league baseball all right running it down here on locked on jaguars i am tony wiggins the host of the locked on jaguars daily podcast where it's your team every day and we thank you for making us your first listen we're talking about guys who could surprise in camp and why it's important we were speaking about chad moma and folks might say, "Wig, well, that's no surprise. Chad Muma was the first linebacker off the bench last year. Chad Muma is 
a dude that was a third round pick that they gave major run. Why would it be a surprise that he's in the rotation? It's not what I'm talking about. I want it to be a surprise that Devin Lloyd improves and Chad Moomer improves to the point where that is a battle going into week three or four in the preseason. It's not that I want Devin Lloyd to remain the same. I don't want Devin Lloyd to fail. I just want Chad Muma to step up because if he does and Devin Lloyd is able to hold him off, guess what that means for Devin Lloyd? Then you got a bona fide starter in the middle of the defense. It also means the Jaguars have quality depth at a position uh, that is extremely important in his defense, especially uh, on passing downs and, 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 and on third down when they need people to be able to make tackles and open field to make sure you get them off the field on third down. I think it's a big deal, and I think it's a really, really big deal if the ja if the Jaguars are able to get this sort of play. So watch out for Chad Moomer to see if Chad Moomer can really be a starter. When I evaluated him when he came out and I saw him at the Senior Bowl, I say in year two he's going to be a starter for somebody in the league because he runs like the wind, he flows to the ball, and he doesn't seem to like – he doesn't go around traffic. He goes through it, and he times it perfectly. So I, I thought when they picked him he was a value pick, and I still feel like – uh, that is the same, and it doesn't change just because they pick someone in front of him. Um, and Devin Lloyd wouldn't be a surprise because he is a first round pick with a lot of talent. That is something that they expect, so that's why I chose Chad Moma. Independent of the fact that they picked Devin Lloyd, I want Chad Moma to be a really, really good player. Parker Washington, first year wide receiver out of Penn State. I think Parker Washington is going to play with a level of maturity that is really, really going to shock people. When I see him, I almost want to think of the Moore kid that Kansas City chose last year, but I don't think he's quite that that guy, okay? I really do believe that he has the chance to be that Jericho Cotri type or, you know, that type of player who can really, really, really have a long career playing in the slot, being a really good player, for that club in certain situations i'm not naive i do understand that he won't have a smorgasbord of opportunity here right he won't and the reason why he won't is because the jaguars have used a lot of resources up for guys who have been extremely extremely you know productive here with christian kirk and zay jones and now the addition with the addition of um Calvin Ridley, there's not going to be a lot of room for him to make plays, him being Parker Washington. But Sky Moore is the, is the young man I'm talking about in New England. Same body style, sort of built like a running back, but is going to be able to play. I just think a guy that had a high level of productivity as a number two receiver for most of his career, and then he stepped up last year, maybe not didn't have the numbers and suffered a little bit Penn State because of the quarterback play. I just believe that there's room for – a mature guy who played a lot at, a, at an extremely high level, who's also going to not be rushed, but have uh, at least some opportunities to show what he can do and make some plays. And, and, and you're going to see those in training camp. You won't see those. And the reason why I say training camp, because it's really, really important that you distinguish the difference in the games. He's not going to be able to do that early on unless he has a good training camp and shows that just off the snap of a finger. And, and this is why this is important, because what if one of those receivers tweaks something? Okay, who's going to be the number four guy? You want a ready-to-play, ready-made, not going to be afraid of the moment. Physically, the way he's built, he can handle the slot right away. And he can also high point balls on the outside. Even if you look at his body, he's sort of built like Steve Smith Sr., where you don't think that he's a dude that's going to go up and fight for the ball. But when you watch the tape, the tape suggests that he's not just some dude you throw into the slot, that he, whatever he is, I think he's going to start out early. As that, I don't think there's going to be a world of upside, but I do think that whatever it is, he's going to show you, he's going to show you in the right situation. He could be a guy who can catch 50 balls and average 50 balls for his career. Jamison Crowder type guy. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And usually players like that are ready to play right away. Whether they have the opportunity or not, 
is different. But players like that are ready to play right away. That's why I said in training camp, it is so important for him to take advantage of his opportunities because they're going to give their starters rest. They're going to be preseason games where you barely see the starters. And if this dude shows up and shows out, it tells you that you have a bona fide number four who at the blink of an eye could run the entire playbook and be a number three because of someone getting nicked or someone missing a short amount of time and that the game is not too big for him at the highest level. Never, maybe never a superstar, and that's not what we're looking for. But we're looking for players that allow you to make decisions, the decisions to stick with your playbook when your starters are hurt or injured, and the decision maybe a year or two down the road that says, look, we got a number three if one of these guys, you know, if they get out of pocket contract-wise and, it, and it's a little bit too much for us. He's another player. I want teams that need a wide receiver to say, hey, man, y'all got three starters. What do you want for number four? Doesn't mean I want the Jaguars to get rid of them. I'll echo that again. But what it does mean is the more players like this you have, and maybe the ceiling for a guy like Parker Washington is Doug Baldwin, which is very good. But at first, Doug Baldwin didn't have to play a whole bunch out there, did he? Maybe there's a there's a little bit of who's the dude that Jalen dumped, uh, his, his, his former brother-in-law that he dumped. Uh, that dude, that dude, the dude that played at Notre Dame, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe that's the type of player that we're talking about that's a hard-nosed, good, solid football player that does everything right, that is ready to go, that is ready to play. I really do believe that Parker Washington has a chance to do that. Now, this next one shouldn't be much of a, a surprise because of the way he was picked. But he's going to be a surprise because even when he was picked where he was, it was a surprise, and that is Brenton Strange. I want the Jaguars to be right about this. And if you look back at Trent Baalke's history, there are a lot of people that said Trent never did a good job of drafting, drafting wide receivers uh, since he's been in the league, even when he was with other teams. And I'm not going to argue with you, but one thing I will tell you that he did scout and do very well with is the tight ends, right? Delaney Walker, guys like that. He's identified tight ends. Now, Trent starts with traits. He starts with big, strong, tough. Brenton Strange is all of that, right? Not as nifty as you'd like, but you already have a guy like that in Evan Ingram. But along with, and he was a teammate of Parker Washington's in college, along with Parker Washington is the guy, is a guy who, when he did make plays the way that he made them, that's all conducive to what the Jaguars need. The Jaguars need toughness. They need red zone toughness. They need versatility in their in their offense so that they don't have these, what I call poker tails. Like when you have a tight end in the game, you know he's a blocker. You don't expect him to catch a ball. So like when he does, it's like, oh, he caught one or they threw it to him. You know they ain't going to do it all day. So once they throw that one pass to that guy, you might have to watch out for it, but you know they ain't trying to eat all day throwing the, the ball to dudes that, that don't really catch the ball uh, very well. So – the key for me is is to get just really, really good football players, and I think Britain Strange is one of them. I'll talk more Britain Strange in just a second on Locked on Jaguars in segment three, and then I'll tie all this in together and tell you why I think it's super, super, super important for the Jaguars to make sure that they're in a situation this year where iron sharpens iron. I'll do that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. All right, third and final segment here on Locked On Jaguars. Once again, shout out to FanDuel. Make sure you tap into FanDuel, um, FanDuel forward slash Locked On Jaguars. Make sure you do that because what you'll get is a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel forward slash Locked On, all one word, Locked On, to make sure that you tap in and also shout out again to our everydayers appreciate you joining us here on locked on jaguars and to the new folks who are going to be everydayers tomorrow when you join back make sure you like subscribe and hit the bell on youtube as well um we talked a lot about iron sharpening iron with Brenton strange park what Brenton strange actually makes that position better because if 
let's just say if they're not able to work out an agreement, but Evan Ingram wants to play on that one year deal, then it's going to get more and more difficult for the Jaguars. Even they're going to have a bunch of salary cap money next year. They still have to be very, I wouldn't say frugal, but they have to be very, very good and astute of assigning money and knowing who they're going to pay and who they won't pay. Even come next year when they're going to have, uh, they're going to be plentiful when it comes to salary cap space. That might be a decision that they might have to make with Evan Ingram. And I want Brenton Strange to make that a harder decision. You notice I'm just, I want the floor of the team to come up. As the ceiling continues to rise and the floor comes along with it, then that thing sort of moves together as opposed to the ceiling going up and the floor remaining low. And now you got this wide variance of what type of play that you're going to get week to week. I just want consistent effort. I want the, the lowest form of their football playing, I want that to be better than average. That means every single week, the at the very least, you're going to get a better than average, uh, at the very least, you're going to get the better than average effort from the Jaguars. And you add a little Trevor Lawrence and you add a little Doug Peterson and a little situation of football in there, I think that bodes well because that means they have a chance to win every single week. And the only way that that happens is, if some, I'll do this again. I'm not going to, these ain't the only three guys that I hope that can surprise. I'll name three more. We'll do this next weekend or next week. We'll go back through it and name three more players that we hope surprises. And all of them won't, but if they all do, that means iron will sharpen iron for this entire team. What exactly does that mean? Does it mean that players play timid or they play scared because they're afraid to lose playing time? No, but I think what it means is instead of being timid and afraid, I think it means aware, aware that you got to show up, that you got to get in that film room. See, you're not afraid when you do the things that you're supposed to do that breed confidence, right? You know what makes you confident? Repetition, demonstrated performance, showing up, being where you're supposed to be, knowing that there's somebody chewing at your ankles trying to take your lunch money. Right. All of those things, if they continue to get better day by day by day, practice by practice by practice, it elevates the franchise. Right. It almost elevates the franchise to a point where it doesn't matter who's in the game, of course, outside of Trevor Lawrence, outside of a couple of more people maybe Calvin Ridley and yeah. Okay. And maybe the, the Trayvon and, and Tyson Campbell, they're going to be some players that are outliers with this doesn't apply to, but for the most part, nothing is better for team morale than having a bunch of guys that are all on the same page. When y'all thought about the guys that left here angry, they were tired of losing in the past, Right. They made the most money and got the most credit when they won, but the more there was more pressure on them. And the one thing NFL players hate is it's not personal, but they hate when guys get paid that can't play. Because they know that once a team pays players that can't play or pays players that they know are subpar, that those teams are going to do every single thing in their power. And I know I just rolled my eyes because it drives me crazy, but they're going to do everything in their power, every single thing in their power to prove that they're right about those guys. I don't know how many times I saw Luke Jokel getting steamrolled and pancaked and people just left him out there because, well, we picked him. We got to leave him out there because we believe in our picks and we believe in the things that we did. No, man, that's wrong. That's wrong. Guys like that, too, will make you want to force a round peg into a, 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 or a square peg into a round hole and they can't play. That's not iron sharpening iron. What that is, is guys just standing around saying, well, they're going to play that other guy. So ain't no use in me to push any further or or have his lip poked out. There's nothing. There's nothing worse than a player who's angry because he believes he's better than the guy in front of him and everybody else knows it. The fight that broke out on the field and went into the locker room between players, it was all about Taven Bryan being in the game when he shouldn't have been. There's nothing. It's not players getting money. It's not one guy getting money and another guy not getting money. It's not players getting attention. When you have the right guys, there is nothing worse 
than paying or playing a person just because you picked them and you paid them and now you have to leave them out there. There is nothing that will ruin morale on the team more than that because now you're sticking a dude out here with me and it ain't nothing personal. I like this guy personally, but there's no way we're going to win with him over there. That's the stuff that makes guys not do their job. That's the stuff that makes guys have to try to do more than what they're supposed to be doing. So this is why it's very, very important to me that the floor of that room is lifted up and individuals are trying to trying to be selfish. If you're an undrafted free agent or if you're a guy who like if you're a Chris Claybrooks, a guy like that that's on the fringe of making the team, or if you're Jordan Smith and you have something to prove, I want you to be as selfish as you can be. Because the structure of football, because you don't have the ball, won't allow your selfishness to hurt the team unless you're not doing your job at the same time. I rarely am the guy that says I got to outwork the next person because I think if you're focusing on how hard somebody else is working, then you're not working hard enough. If you got time to think about him, then you're not thinking about yourself. I'm a real believer in self-motivation. But my self-motivation, if I was any of those guys at the bottom of the roster, my self-motivation would be get there first. Don't I wouldn't say I'm going to get there before him. I'm just saying I'm going to get there and I'm going to be the first one at that building. And if somebody's there with me, then fine. We're both there before they open the door, because guess what? Iron just sharp and iron. But what I won't do is say, hey, what time are you coming in and try to beat you by one minute? That's fake. There's a way that you can be selfish within a team concept that everybody benefits from, including your teammates. And that's the that's the part of this that I hope the Jaguars are able to find i won't be hard to find because i'll be right here on locked on jaguars whether it's on youtube or wherever you get your podcast if you listen to audio podcast be right here because it's your team every day and the everydayers will be right here with me also make sure you like subscribe on the youtube page put comments down below i'll get to them when i can i promise you or hit me up on social media at shop talking wig on twitter or on the locked on jaguars twitter page as well until tomorrow when we have more content, make sure you check out the uh, Locked On NFL podcast. I will be there tomorrow with James Rapine. That's the national podcast. Make that your next listen and also tap in and like and subscribe to that page as well. Until then, you guys take care of each other, and I'll see you on another edition of Locked On Jaguars.